and style. During the course, we switch and we drop and we ride around the track together. 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 Getting some real big chunks. <laughs> oh, knowing that this could go at any moment. Look at this. Oh, it's it's already leaking. You see it? It's leaking. That's mad. I can't believe we just caught this real time. How close was I to losing brakes? Oh, that one snapped. Now then, welcome to another video. It's been two weeks since we last filmed the uh, E61 update where we found quite a few things were uh, a bit corroded, had a bit of a bad time, pondered what to do with the car and all that stuff. Well, in those two weeks, I've been all around the houses. Should I replace the car? Should I repair the car? Should I just get rid of the car and use something else? You know, what do I need from a car anymore? And all that usual jazz. And I've uh, been watching quite a few YouTube videos, as you can imagine, which is where I got the idea to, to maybe try and improve the audio a bit. The audio on some of my videos has been annoying me a little bit, especially with the music, I like working with music. It does cause me some problems, not, not a huge amount, but sometimes it can be overpowering. So we're gonna try the wireless mic. I've been thinking about one car in particular, which I've always quite liked, which is a, a dodgy Citroen. I found this YouTube channel, who's, he's got one, and uh, he does a lot of this. So this is inspired by some plagiarized kind of, but we're using a wireless mic. We're gonna give it a go, right? We'll see how it goes. This has been my daily driver for the past couple of weeks. So this is my, my mum's old car, my dad's still got it. Mini Countryman, it's a four cylinder diesel. It's not as economical as what you might think. Um, it's all right, I'm definitely missing the five series though. I had a look at all the different cars and nothing is economically as viable as just keeping and repairing that. So I've spent, at the minute I've spent 350 quid on, on parts, right? We still ideally need to spend about another 200 or so on some other parts, but we'll see how we get on for today. I'll show you the parts that I've got in the back of the Mini. So I've got an, a new front spring, one new front spring. So I have still been quite, what's the word, tight. I've been trying to make sure I don't spend money where I don't need to. I put a new front spring on that car a few years ago. I only did one side. With this spring, I'm doing the other side. I just don't want it to snap. Should I replace both? It was 19 pounds this spring. I probably should have just changed both, I know. But I'm trying not to spend all of the coin. So I spent 350 quid and that's a lot. I mean, is it a lot? Whatever, I've spent 350 quid. We've got some new shocks. Which are these, which they're not Sash, they're not Bill Stein, they're not OEM, they're not, they're, they're, uh, they're cheap, they're cheap shocks, but they're new, so hopefully they do more dampenings than anything else. We've got new control arms, so the ones that I haggard to death and the ones that had a slightly loose ball joint, we've got new ones. It's the same brand as what the front arms are, not the best but it should be okay. We've got some new bushes for the rear. I looked into this, these are actually Lemforder. So we have actually got some good things. These are, these are Lemforder rear bushes. So we'll get onto that. I'm not too sure what this one is. Fabi oh, this is a gearbox mount. A new gearbox mount for the car. And we're getting posh now. I mean, ideally I need to replace all the driveline bushes because the car does a bit of a, a shimmy when it's, uh, when it's coming to stationary or setting off. But I figured a gearbox mount would be a good place to start and it was only 20 quid. So we'll see if that makes a decent difference. I've got a new wing mirror glass because one of my heated wing mirrors doesn't work. The glass, uh, not sure what this is. Ah, so that's some brake line fittings. The brake line itself hasn't arrived yet. We've got the fittings though. We do need to do that brake line and sort that rust out. And then finally, the thing that I'm perhaps most looking forward to, this is not actually specific to uh, the five series, but it should help with all sorts of jobs. This is a brake pedal depressing tool. DVSA approved brake pedal depressing tool. So this will allow me to put some pressure 
on the brakes, all the accelerator, whatever I'm doing, it'll allow me to depress the pedals, hopefully. Um, it'll be really good for when I'm uh, bleeding brakes or changing brake lines to hold some brake pressure on to stop the lines just uh, emptying all the fluid. It's just something that I've needed for a while and I finally bought one, so yeah, looking forward to that. But that's his lot and that was £350 worth. But yeah, we are repairing the 5 Series today. Hopefully we'll, uh, by the end of this video, give it an alignment and everything and it'll be good to go. As good as the Mini's been, as good as it's been, it's got, it's, it's quite nicely specced, but I, I do, I do miss, I do miss the 5 Series. And obviously I looked at, at newer 5 Series and I looked at all sorts of different cars, but purchasing a new car and, and the stress associated with that, I've just not got the capacity for it at the moment. It was definitely the easiest, simplest choice to just fix what we've got. And I've had the car four years now, and really I looked at how many miles I'd done in the car and how much money I'd actually spent on it. It's, it's not been an expensive car to run, really. Compared to, you know, doing what, what the old, we'll, we'll not get back into the whole electric car thing and, and how, how, uh, how our governments want us to uh, perceive the motor vehicle in, in the modern age. We'll, we'll not get into that too far, but certainly as far as, as cost goes, this is the most economical way to continue having a car that I can drive about. And obviously we've got other things which are constraints on cash and having a, having a daily driver which just daily drives is good. I've not bought anything to try and fix the oil leaking problems. Um, I figured, yes, that was quite drastic, but also it's clearly been doing that for a while and it's not causing me any immediate problems. The oil level doesn't go down, it doesn't use any oil or anything like that. It's obviously weeping, but it's not significant enough to really be worried about straight away. I would like to fix it, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's quite an intensive job just to do like the rocker cover gasket on that. It's, it's, it's a big job. The inlet manifold, the injectors and all that have come out. So if, if we're gonna do that, we'll do everything. We'll, we'll change the injector seals, we'll change all the gaskets and everything. We'll give it a good clean but that is not happening anytime soon. Let's get some parts fitted. All right, we're gonna start by building the shock absorbers. Now, maybe I should have actually, this spring looks kind of bent, that's weird, isn't it? Maybe this is the one where the bad damper was. So this is the new spring. <laughs> What's happened, oh shit. What's happened here? The new spring, compared to the good old spring, if I get them at the same, uh, no, they're roughly the same, and we can't guarantee this is 100% to the OEM specs, right? But yeah, definitely sort of regretting not spending the extra 20 pound and just getting two new springs, but bangonomics, eh? I got them for the rear bushes though. Um, yeah, that's the shock absorber brand, the, the QH. I think they used to be like a classic British one, which is now a, a Chinese, maybe, but these, this brand divides people online. People don't know whether it's a premium brand or a budget brand. I would say it's somewhere in the middle. These are definitely primo, right? Somewhere in the middle, budget, budget. I got some new dust covers as well, because they were destroyed. Uh, the spring was a, was a cheap spring, like I say, 18 pounds. I should have definitely bought two, but when the basket, the basket was over 400 pounds at one point. And um, yeah, I remember changing the spring a few years ago, so I thought, what's the point, eh? Uh, yeah, definitely should have brought two. Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of regretting that now, but whatever. We saved 20 quid, yes! <laughs> Let's get these assembled. We'll do the nice one first. So I already had new top mounts. You'll know that from the, the old video. So we've got new dust covers, new top mounts. Let's get these assembled. So I've not actually been up to the unit since we stripped the car. Well, technically we did come and drop the ramp off. So we've bought another ramp, the same as this one, um, sharing it with, with Ed. And we've got another chap who's moved into the unit recently but you might recognize him from previous videos we'll uh, we'll go over there in a bit but that's going to be my alignment ramp which i'm looking forward to now we're gonna have to save a few things from this um that top spring seat and the bottom is that the, should that not be at the top shouldn't there be one for the bottom is that the one for the Alright, I think we're going to have to do a bit of figuring out here. That looks like it goes 
Yeah, that sits there pretty nice. So that must be that one. So the top mount sits on that. And you can see where the, see where that was sat before. Right, so we don't need anything else from you. This was actually the good one. This one's not tea bag. It's the other one that was knackered. But it's the sort of thing that you do want to be replacing in pairs, so. Thank you, Mr. Shock. You've done 20 years, uh, well, you've done 19 years, nearly 200,000 miles. Now you're about to be replaced by what I'm sure is an inferior part, but, you know, this car probably once was a 40 grand vehicle. It is now not a 40 grand vehicle. Oh God, look at that. Some very weird marks on there. It's been, it's clearly been powder coated, but uh, we need a knife. You got a new nut? Oh, nice. So I do believe these are sided, but, oh. A universal partner, yeah. Okay, so this is what it should look like. So it's it's harder to depress. The release is still about the same as the good, well, the working damper from before. But obviously, as we saw before, uh, the other damper was absolutely knackered. But this one's this it's really hard to depress. So it's clearly doing more. There's more things going on. Turn that down. So what's interesting about this, it's clearly, um, so they make, it's a bit like coilovers, right? A bit like modern day coilovers where they'll, they'll make the body and then make the body attach or make the body suit other cars. Um, there's no, how do you get protected from the elements? And I can't tell if I'm bending it or not or if this is attached on here, but obviously it's definitely not on that one. Let's not worry about it. So, yeah, we should definitely have this, which will be the spring seat. We should try and give things a bit of a clean as well, just so. I want to give them a bit of a clean, just to stop dirt obliterating, you know, rusting the spring out. It's gonna get dirty anyway, and it doesn't really matter that much. Let's give it a quick little brush. probably uh, think about tidying the bench at some point. Ah, that'll be fine. We don't need to just get the big lumps out. So you go there. Not the best fit. Well, look how clean it is now. Oh. Okay, so we've got the, the spring seats on both, on top and bottom. So I guess next it's the spring. And which way does that go? Because it's got a smaller coil at the top or at one side I don't know if that's the top neither feels like it's the right way could be that but look how slanted it is got a new bump stop here dust cover made in Germany hello are you going to go on? How do you think this works? I would imagine they were completely destroyed, so I'm not sure, but maybe that sits in there and it goes like that. Obviously the bump stop goes at the top and by science, you'd imagine the fat bit would be at the, the, the highest part. Also the text is upside down now, so does it actually within? Does it sit within this at the top? Might be one for the Google machine. I'm gonna check the Google machine. Well, this is an image for the rear one, but yeah, the fat part's at the top and then that just, that goes into the, into the fat part. See, the text says made in Germany and everything. Normally the text is the orientation of, of how it goes down, right? And why would that fat part be at the bottom? Oh, well, cheap wrote real OEM as, as gospel here. That's definitely showing the fat part at the bottom into the dust boot, so we'll go with that. <sighs> it 
interesting. So I'm currently struggling to get the, the dust boot on. Right, I've had a look on, on the Googles and everything and this is a different design than the OEM, which is probably better because the OEM ones just fall to bits. Yeah. But I also think it's maybe slightly wider, maybe this is too too narrow, but I've got a plan. So I think that is the right way. Go through the go through the arse end. Yeah, can you see me alright? Going through the arse end. And then that ridge matches into that ridge and it's the same diameter, so I'm gonna try and knock it on over down the strut and that's gotta be on it. This shouldn't be that difficult, so there's a considerable difference between the size of the bore and the size of the shaft. <laughs> we've, we've, we've all had this problem before. Hmm. Multi-purpose grease. Dirty fingers. That's a significant amount. Yeah, I think I think the problem is that it's too small. <sighs> yeah, that was the answer. So the spring orientation, I forgot to check that, but it shouldn't be too hard. Smaller coil at the bottom. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely smaller coil at the bottom because the top mount doesn't fit the top. It just feels wrong. Well, let's give this plate a little clean. Oh, it's getting a bit messy on it. So this is, Flat at the top, domed at the bottom. Although, this grease, I mean. Hmm. So what I'm concerned about is the grease here. There doesn't seem to be anything to, to stop it other than this plate, which that's got like a square on it from somewhere. Dust protection cover. Pelican parts. This is still mostly together. Ah. That sits on the ball bearings. Where's that gone then? Right, for now I'll use this one. But yeah, look, there should be something that goes in there, which is this piece. So it's a good job we um, checked into that, because stuff and then that goes over the top. Right, spring compressing time. I don't know if that is actually meant to be where the spring sits. If it feels wrong then it's wrong, right? Like the spring wants to sit there, it doesn't want to sit. But why would they have a recess if we're not going to use the recess? Right, we're installing a new ramp at the minute. Might be able to see in the corner. I'm going to go and do that. And then we'll pick this up in a little bit. I'm going to try and think about what should happen there. Be right back. Oh, what excellent welding has been done today. Okay, so we're doing these. Well, the ramp is installed-ish, just needs wiring up. Definitely a bit of a problem how, so this was a pig shed, right? And it was built to be, everything to the left of that line there is, is level, but everything from here down to that dip where the trailers are, you can see there's a bit of a ridge there, yeah? So this is angled on purpose and it was to make it easier for them um, cleaning out the pig shed, right? You know, mopping up muck and all that. They were just jet washing all the shit out and they just jet wash it down there. That's what this shed used to be, a pig shed. You'll know that if you've uh, been around a while. Anyway, what that means is that the leg on the right compared to the left was actually two inches or more than two inches lower. So we've spaced it up a bit with some box section, strong, yeah. 
But the issue that we've got then is one, our anchor bolts probably should have been a little bit longer. And two, that now means that the ramp legs are two inches higher. So it's, it's what would you rather have, a level ramp or more usability? I don't know, it's, it's, it's imperfect. But anyway, we're back on with the, the stuff now. And I've just, <laughs> I've just been doing some more Googling and have a look around. And I was looking at these bump stops. I can't believe how far we are into the video and we're still at step one, but whatever. The bump stops, they've, I noticed the top of them, or should I say, what I think now is the top of them, the, the riding, the writing reads the, the right way and all that. That's clearly flat, right? So I'm thinking that should be at the, the top of the strut, but then where does it, where does it hook around? Does it, does that mean that it has to go all the way through the arse end? Because if we, if we go this side, look, that'll just slowly, that'll just slide straight over. So I think I need to get that bump stuff back off anyway and do it that way, but obviously with the, you know what I mean, don't you? Oh, good state of this. Got some birds in here as well. Estero birds. Something like that, maybe. I'd prefer if those ridges were in the same place, but I can't get it to, I can't push it through the bottom and I can't get it through the top. But I mean, it's not gonna go anywhere. I don't know, I think that's probably going to be the way, right? Because if it's like that, then I reckon that'll probably get damaged and disappear quite quick. Anyway, back on with it now. Oh yeah, another thing that was tripping me out was where this, the this end of this spring seats, I would imagine it would sit in there, but it, it doesn't seem to. And I've had a look online and I found quite a few pictures of these struts assembled where the, the bottom does stop there, which if so, then what's, what's this for? What is this for? Maybe you can tell me in the comments. But I've, had a, I've had a look and I was like, oh, surely it's wrong. If you put the spring round there, it doesn't fit right. It just, it's not happy at all. It's much happier being there. And I think that's maybe why the other spring looks a bit dodgy, because I think I might have forced it in there before, which might have caused some problems. But yeah, let's get this spring compressed. Let's get it all back together, yeah. Well, I just made an interesting discovery. So remember how I only bought one spring? Well, this is the good spring. You see anything interesting going at the bottom? It's bent. What? I wonder if I installed the bottom bit wrongly when I, when I changed it, but it's clearly bent the spring. And I'm thinking, do I just want to get another 20 quid spring to, you know, where if it snaps and, and takes out my, uh, Oh, look at the oil dripping off that under tray that's been sat. Well, if it takes out my new posh tyre, then it'll be more than 20 quid, won't it? What do we think? Weird that, isn't it? Why, how did it bend? Maybe it was always bent. Oh, this one's bent as well. Maybe they're just... Maybe that's just how they are. Yeah, maybe that's just how they are. Okay. Disregard that. Can you see how that's... Looks like a C, right? at the bottom, the bottom coil. You see how it's not like a perfect circle? But this one's, uh, this one feels more exaggerated than the other one, doesn't it? I get in my own head to be stuff like this. This is the problem. And it'll never be back together. Should we just throw it back together? All right. I wasn't gonna video this, but I nearly smacked myself in the face. I feel like I'm gonna smack myself in the face. <laughs> So hopefully I don't. Obviously I don't want to rip it. No. Heavens. Oh, this is all very well greased. Very nice and greased. So, I don't think it's too important which way that goes. But I reckon we want to have that on the top. And it just goes like that then. It goes on easier that way. You can you see where this has got? It's definitely that way because this has got uh, it's recesses in that and the opposite of recesses on that side. So we'll try and make sure to line them up. So. We still need to find that other 
bearing cover at some point. Are we happy with that? Like I said, I'd much prefer if this ridge was in there, but I, I can't get it in. So anyway, let's do some compressing. So we're gonna have the, the tail sitting there where it's happy and we're gonna compress. This will be the fun part. Probably be wise just to have this sat on the top as well. So that sits nice. This has a little seat on this side where it sits into it nice. Uh, just putting that on so that I don't get the spring clamp in the way of... I wonder if this is going to be touching that. This might be a... I've had it before where I've got spring clamps stuck. Don't want to do that. I think I missed again. Well, I'm not going to have a... I don't think I'm going to be able to get them long enough anyway. Ooh. I think that's our bearing cover. Found it. Just trying to get you in a bit of a better position. Just ignore that board, that splitter. My experience with spring compressors is pretty limited. With anything, shock and spring's pretty limited, but I'm gonna try and bring these in evenly, I guess. It's probably a, another one where good tools have been nice. Oh. So I just reached the limit of this spring compressor and when it ratcheted, it dragged the spring compressor around. You need to be careful of when they bottom out. If I can get a bit more on this one, I might have to bring it back round. Might be easier to compress it, not on the strut. Has anyone thought about like that? Maybe. I can see the threads now. Put the helmet cam back on. That might be enough to get a thread on. No, it's not going to be, is it? There's a square on this. Something's pressed into it, square. Does that mean to go on the top of the damper? Top of the... Pretty sure it's meant to be like that. I think that's how it's meant to go. Nothing here is square. During the course, with which it was dropped and we ride round the track together. Change the style. During the course, with which it was dropped and we ride round the track together. Together. But these soft jaw things are fucking shite. That's what slid. I need more compression here, but this is all the way cammed out, right? It's all the way. Okay, now if you can come in, don't come out, don't slide, that would be ideal. All right, so the saga continues. The threads aren't happy here. I don't know if I'd damage it. I didn't really put any load for it though to damage it. Uh, if you're wondering, yes, it is a locking one, but it was, it was getting bound up before it even locked, so. Hope for this sorts it. This is a thread file if you don't know what one is, it's very good. See it's a bit better now but it's still crunchy. I wonder if this nut's bad. Use the original nut. It's going on but it's Shouldn't really have to go this many times. It's the threads that are damaged. Way further down than what we were just working. What's that? It should be all right now. Okay, come on, let's get this fucking together, man. Jesus. Never meaning to send. Beauty, 
Okay, are we happy that everything's in? It still needs nipping down a little bit. Uh, everything's in the right place. Everything. Oh, I'll tell you one thing that we didn't line up was the bump stop, but I reckon it'll find its way, will it? Maybe. All right, job done. What do you reckon the torque specker that is? Ooh, look at that now. Goosey goosey. I don't know about these dust boots. Better than nothing. But that is one strut assembled. Uh, I'll torque the top up. Won't be much, will it? It's probably, it's probably enough. Well, we can do them in the car. We'll not worry about it too much. Um, there is some little caps to go on as well to stop the dust getting in the top. But that is one side assembled. I shall now assemble the other side. So, I will now go to the other side. I will prepare that and I'll see you when I'm done and we can start installing these back on the car. Wow, excuse the mess. Not until I get the camera out did I notice. Why am I working like this? So, yeah, the dampers are done, as you can see. Yeah. No, I doubled back on the whole bent spring thing, I thought, for 20 quid. I'm not in a rush, you know, I've got the beast for a few more days, no problem. So I'll, I'll order a spring and we'll do that again properly. But all three of these ball joints, I was gonna do one and then show you the other one, but all three of the ball joints have kind of stopped at the same bit. And I tried to, I tried to clean it up a little bit, but it's just, no es bueno, man. Oh, I need to try and see if I can get my mate here in. We can get him in. Yeah, I should be able to just get him in. Looks like I was here before, putting the old ones in. Yeah, some witness marks. Should just be able to get in. Yeah, it's gonna be a pain, man. So we've got one strut assembled, which is the front right. We'll get this in, get the hub on, get the new arms in, and then do the rest tomorrow. Maybe, mm, lovely. Uh, nuts. We need nuts. No. Why don't you have a little tidy up then as well? I'm still not sure about that dust boot assembly, but it's better than no dust boot. Uh, bump stop. Maybe the bump stop should be covered by the dust boot. So maybe the actual rubber bit, the plastic bits on backwards, but the writing is the, it's the right way up on the writing, so I'm not taking it apart. Right, brake caliper is currently being suspended through the hole which we need to use. Put you nuts there, right? Don't, don't fall. Uh, that's it, right into the body. I uh, the, the top mounts are slotted for camber adjustment. <laughs> Maximum. Let's clean some of that corrosion away. Tool. So where do they expect this locking thing to go? Or is that just like a stopper and maybe that slots into the slot? Must be that, right? So what we can do, we can measure, we can check the position. That's oh, a lot higher. So that's just gonna stop it going into the hub, really. So why are these, these are sided. The factory ones I don't think are sided, but these ones are, 
left and right. Also interesting how the width, the girth of the factory shock does come down gradually at the top, but this has a sudden, I mean, this is like a universal damper, you know, adapted for this car, right? Whereas this is a, a damper made for this car, you'd thought. So I've got no idea why the locking part is like that, but let's, uh, let's put some of this. Oh God, this has all gone to shit. Maybe I should have kept the lid on. That'd be all right. I say grease, it's not grease. It's anti-seize. Maybe we should have put the damper in this first. Otherwise we might be having the same issues again. Do you think? What do we think? Try and connect that as it is, see what happens. Might be better if we take the disc off. Be a lot lighter. Ruby Tuesday. <sighs> These discs are a bit funky as well, aren't they? <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Oop. Surely it's not meant to be like that, right? I don't think so. Look at these aluminium dust shields though. I did have to change one. New one, maybe it's that one. Already broken, good. Ooh. Wheel bearing feels pretty gross. Oh, that is so light. Say what you want about aluminium. That is so light. Yeah, the wheel bearings. A bit free, but no real side to side movement. So that is so light. I can't, oh, aluminium grease everywhere. This is the kind of grease that you find on your clothes like a few weeks later and you're like, where the fuck did that come from? Oh yeah, I remember. Well, given how light it is, we'll, we'll put the shocker on over here. Then we'll have good eyes on how it goes together as well. Although, we want to have that arm in before we put the shocker in, don't we? Come on, keep up. How should we, uh, how should we deal with this, do you reckon? Hmm? So this is what causes so much grief that led to a lot of these problems is how tight this is. I wonder if we can open her up. Try one of the uh, try one of the foreign favourite methods. Just to tap one of them in. I saw this method mentioned on a forum. It's not a good way. That's not a good way. I've... I feel like I've made a mess of the bar more than anything. No, we'll go back to the chisel. There we go. So we reckon that's just to stop it like that then. If so, why are they sided? One's for the left and one's for the right, but as we can see, you know, it's definitely a hard stop for a reason, right? You're free to go now, mate. Yeah, this was uh, <coughs> this was definitely a good idea to do this off of the car. You wanna come out? Wait, you wanna come out? Okay, because now we can try and get this bolt in. Because this might be a pain in the ass. I'm gonna guess it's that one that's fully threaded and fully corroded. This side the same. One of them's clearly more corroded than the rest. Uh, seems like it's longer than what it should be. Real OEM to the rescue again, hang on. 
bolt number three, M12 1.5 by 100. Is that you? Looks like it, doesn't it? Could be. Yeah. Look at that, it's like new. So which side is the clamping side? Does it matter? It's almost like one side of this is clamp, is uh, threaded, but I don't think it should be. I think it's just perhaps, perhaps the last time I did this, it must have self-threaded itself or something. What do you reckon the torque spec is? 100. Does that, hang on, does the bracket, ah, uh, shizer. Oh, that bracket goes through it as well. Ah, that's why, I see they're not daft BMW. So the reason that's got that thread there is for this bracket, okay. And that bracket goes on the back. Okay, so we, we can't nip this up out of the car, but it's not a huge problem. Right, let's get this in the car and then we can put this hardware in. And then I reckon it's home time. Oh, seven degrees, it's gone up. I reckon that'll still hold its weight anyway. Bing, bing. Oh. <sighs> Just uh, by the way what have we got? We've got a bit of a leak from the rear, that could be... What could that be? I don't know. And a bit of a leak from the front. The car's been sat here for two weeks without under trays on it, yeah? That back one's a little bit concerning, isn't it? Oh. Could the gearbox be leaking? I guess it could be something running down the back of the engine. The gearbox is wet, though. Could be a crank oil seal, maybe? Let's not worry about that for now. So I want to get this boot off so I can get to the inner track wood end. Uh, class the clips right at the top. Okay. I can maybe just get to it. Can't get in to snip the boot for the, the steering. It won't, sp it won't spin either. I can't get into that. Uh, I'm gonna try and hit it. I don't think this is very, I like it, but I don't think it's uh, unlike this. Why am I using this hammer so much? And not enough left to go round. Need a slightly longer chisel. I've got it to move slightly, but. Aha, I got it, I got it. I think it's a job for the new Knipex. 
they're just that ball joint, is it? Yeah. Where's them new Knipex? There you are. These things, man. Pretty good. Gotta say. Why am I on my knees? Why am I on my knees? Why do I keep forgetting? <sighs> okay, that's tight. Pretty tight. I don't really want to push the car off the ramp, you know. There's something to grab onto. Rubber. Fucking hell, that was tight, that. Hey. All right. <sighs> Lovely stuff. Uh, are you sided? Part number two, two ten, two seven two ten, two seven two ten, four nine seven. Oh, easy lamp order. Four nine seven. Looks like they're not sided. What do we reckon? A bit of Chinese lock tie on here. Guess we can put this on afterwards, right? This is genuine China lock tie. Hello? Hello? I'm cold too, mate, but you know, I've got all day. Oh, there's a tiny hole to be fair, I can let you off. I thought it was bigger than that. Hey, not for the first time today. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the China Loctite. Hello? You wanna start fretting soon? What the fuck, bro? Okay, how tight do you reckon? Now this is where we pull the car off the ramp. I don't know what's going on with that lip of the disc, it's weird, isn't it? I know you can buy two different uh, size discs for this car, and I'm pretty sure I got the smaller ones. Remember everything needs talking up, yeah? You won't forget, will you? No, we'll talk it up at the same time.
Oh, now there's one more thing. It's a bit long as well, that one. Oh, the rest are about the right size. Can I encourage you to... I wonder all the threads are fucked, eh? Oh no, sir. I didn't fuck the threads. Look at that, it's basically a car again. That bolt's missing for some reason, but... All joints are a bit slack. Oh no, sir. Don't you listen to me? What a mess. Alright, that's a nice place to stop, I think. So we've got our new arms, steering arms, traction arm, I don't know what they would call them. What would they call them? Arms, I don't know. Look at that dust boot. Oh, she looks so good. Yeah, I'm not still not sure about that, but better than not having one in it. So we'll see what it's like when it's compressed. Obviously, we've got quite a lot of work still to do once we compress the car. I'll, I'll probably put it on my tables, I think, and tighten all the suspension up and all that, and then we'll have a wheel alignment to do. That'll be fun. Um, tomorrow, I will try and make some progress on the other stuff, have a bit of a tidy up, and I'll see you there, right? Yeah? Tidy up in three, two, one. Now then, welcome back. As promised, with a little tidy up. Mm -hmm. I've been here for a couple of hours, getting some bits done. I've made some good progress. Powered by Trans Anthems today. So you might notice that the front suspension is back together. Yes, it is. No, I haven't tightened these bushes yet. We'll do that at ride height. Don't worry, we'll do that at ride height. But I decided to use that spring. Um, whatever. I should have bought two springs, you're right. I mean, saving 20 quid doesn't seem such like a good idea now, but when you're spending 350, you know, you got a 350, about 350. So anyway, that's enough from that. There's one job left to do, which is the brake pad wear sensor. I've already done a little bit of uh, checking out on this this morning. So this was actually, believe it or not, rigged up properly. It was in the brake, uh, it was attached to the brake pad and you know, it was doing the sensor rings, but for whatever reason it fell out and then got ripped in the wheel or something like that. So I did the classic, just tie the ends together. If you just tie the wires together, the circuit's complete and um, yeah, it's no longer an open circuit and the wear sensor will, will go out. But on these E60s, they, they go nuts if, if something, if it thinks you've got a really bad fault, they go nuts and it's on the screen all the time and it just gets real annoying. So I want to fix this. So what I found out anyway is there's two wires here. Basically one of them's doing nothing. So I think what we'll do is just cut it somewhere up near the plug and just join the wires together there, make sure there's continuity, plug it in and forget about it. All right, so we'll do that first and then we're gonna move our way down this chassis leg. Now, do you remember we found some brown stuff? Now, this is obviously concerning and if I was gonna keep the car forever, I would perhaps be more concerned, but I'm, I'm not that concerned. The most concerning part for me is these brake lines, so that's fine. So you see there's a bit of corrosion there where this plastic clip goes on. But the worst of that is up here. And this one as well. Nasty. Now, I know a guy, I know a guy who had this, uh, this line fail on him. And because it's under the under tray, it's not something you'd see on an MOT test or anything. So if you've got an E60, you might want to might take a look at these. We're going to change them. I'm not sure where we'll... We might, we might do it properly, we might not, but I've got some, some line. You can tell the cars had rear lines already at some point. Look at the, look at the uh, greening on the copper there. That's, that's mad, isn't it? Um, but yeah, to the rust, I think we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at it. We'll see. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. Yeah, let's, let's get a screwdriver. Do a screwdriver test. Just a little pry bar. bad man. Let's 
screw that comes through there. I wonder if that's for like the interior carpet or something. Yeah. Yeah, we should we should try and clean it up. I mean, we're not going to do any any welds or anything. She's, she's, yeah, it's not good. But there's rust everywhere and it's how far do we go? I noticed this earlier as well. Can you see in there? That's going. And the rear arches, you know, the actual body rust ain't too bad, really. It's got a little bit up there, but on the outside, there's not a lot. Anyway, how long am I realistically going to be keeping this car going for? It is a daily driver at the end of the day, so we're not looking to prolong its life too far. I mean, those are new arms on the front. How long are we going to get out of them? A couple of years? If it goes on for another couple of years, that'd be good. We've got the LSD to, to put in at some point as well. And the bushes that we're going to be changing, we'll be doing these as well today in this video. That's going to be the next job after the brake lines and the rust. So we can attach the brake lines here. That's got a bit of tape on it for some reason. I don't know why. It's touching there. I don't know if that's very good. But yeah, the car's had brake, they're already seized at the back as well because I had to, uh, this is not ideal, it's not too bad when it's not a droop but yeah there's a lot of things which aren't quite ideal but the most concerning thing for me is when I heard about my friends having this brake line here burst then it's been in the back of my head oh look at the state of that it's been in the back of my head for a long time that I've been driving the car around knowing that this could go at any moment. Look at this, oh, it's, it's already leaking. You see it, it's leaking. Wow, what a find. So just taking it out of the bracket, I've managed to penetrate and now it's leaking fluid. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll, we'll focus on this first then. I've got a new toy for the job. Oh yeah, some of the old parts. I'd already put some of them in the bin, but yeah. So I've got a new toy, specifically DVSA approved. Let me in. A brake pedal depressor. So I guess the sooner we get this on the better, going by that brake hose, but I get the camera set up. Let's go on with the brake line. Look at this. Like a dream. Oh, who remembers? Who remembers? Do you remember? Who remembers Clackers? That was a lovely playground favourite. When do you remember the Aztec bar? They're all fantastic memories, Peter. That's mad. I can't believe we just caught this real time. That's crazy, man. How close was I to losing brakes whilst towing, whilst doing anything? It's not good, man, is it? I mean, if you've got an old car, if you've got an old BMW, an old new, you know, because this is still a new car to me and to a lot of people, isn't it? But no, clearly not. Yikes. <laughs> I got a little bit carried away looking at the rust. I just unclipped the, this wire goes to the fuel filter. I don't know why, but it does. Getting some real big chunks. <laughs> oh, there we go. Have you ever heard of the phrase, let sleeping dogs lie? No big holes into the cabin yet though. It does steam up inside the car sometimes. I wonder if this is why. Who knows what the other side looks like, but we're not about to find out anyway. Some good weight reduction going on. There's a little bit here as well, but it's not it's not as bad. I don't think. Stop blowing holes in my ship! <laughs> uh, we'll just get the bulk of it off. I'll put some rust converter on it and we'll paint it black. And pretend it never happened. Uh, this brake hose is still doing good stuff, it's fine. 
let's, uh, let's sort this out so that we can say the front end's done. Oh, it's strong, this. Maybe it's wrapped in. Might be to take it off in a wanna. Oh, and I cut the wire at the same time. Ha ha ha. Good throw. What well, complicates things ever so slightly. Oh no, that just pulls off. All right. Well, maybe we'll keep that as a protector. Let's try and do this again without breaking it. Okay. Oh, no, I cut the wire again. We'll get there. Softly, softly this time. Softly, softly. Too soft. Car's rusting away and I'm here trying to make a sensor work. Well, that's wrong, isn't it? Trying to make a sensor think it's working. Okay, so we've got two wires. Let's do a minor bit of stripping. No! Too much, that was stripping too much. Fucking ripped the wire apart. Okay, this is uh, this is going to suboptimal very quick, but let's just make sure we've still got some continuity. Okay, this wire is not good, so we can either crimp this or we can put a blob of solder on it. I'll put a blob of solder on it. Give me a chance to use this beast. What a purchase. No, oh, battery's too low, is it? Is it getting warm? No, battery's too low. Yeah, it's getting a bit warm. Hello? Oh yeah, you're warm. Got the wrong tip on it, but it'll be all right. <sighs> okay, that was a bit suboptimal, but we got there. Okay. Does this want to go back on? Factory fresh. Uh, should we seal it from the elements? Bit windy today. You'd never know, right? So that is just going to sit in that box up there with my guy here plugged in. Is that going to be facing down or facing up? Facing up, right? Hey, we'll come back to that. Fucking hell. All right, so we're under the car now. I can try to find a brush so that I can Dab some of this. Hello? This is not a fix, but it would be a shame to just leave it, right? Spray this on so that when I'm working on the car, it'll drip on me as I'm working around it. So while I'm doing the brake line, you'll be able to see this all go black and go all over the floor as well. This light's very bright, I know, but just uh, try ignoring it. Do you want some as well? I'll fucking give it yeah. Here, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Could do a little brush, really, just to, to dab it in. I thought I'd bought some brushes, but... So the brake line that we're going to change starts there. I don't know if it should start there, but it starts there. It's actually up here. I can actually see a joiner, so we'll uh, undo that and hope it comes off. And have a quick peek. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Hey! 
So that should come off now, I think. I can bend it out of the way. Don't snap. Don't snap. Oh, it's screwed on. <laughs> okay. I felt a bit of foam was just chilling, but it's not. It's actually got a screw in it. <sighs> of course, it, why wouldn't it have a screw in it? Plastic ones don't ever come off anyway. Two hundred thousand miles of dirt trapped behind there. It's cool that they did that in a sense. Just to pack that area out a bit. Okay. So I only snapped a bit of the foam. Can we do any foam repairs? And there's the lines, look. Looks a lot cleaner up here. So obviously I don't want the ABS pump going dry, which I think is above that. The, oh, we do have the pressure bladder, so that'll help if anything bad happens. So let's start with the, the nasty line, which is the outer one. Ah, looks like it's going to come apart. Just stood underneath where it was dripping, so that's good. Right, that's pretty free now. Yeah. Just wants undoing at this side. Can we do anything about? Yeah, we can. Excellent. Drip. No dripping. There we go. There we go. Pretty funky, the brake line. Got quite a lot of twists and turns, but we'll... Uh, We'll somewhat replicate that. Maybe not OEM plus, but. So we're gonna try and replicate this somewhat now. I don't think I'll have quite as many twists and turns as what BMW have, but. Let's have a go. Freight line. I'll do it on the floor, yeah. We'll get it something like, and then we'll just... Because it's so easy to bend by hand, this Cooper and Niccolo, I think it's called. If we want to be pros, we can put some cable ties in. You've all seen that Simpsons, right? Where Homer makes the, the barbecue. I'm not going to worry too much about these kinks. We'll we'll do them in the car as it as it needs to be. Although of course that might make the brake line longer, won't it? So we'll follow it a little bit. That's something like. Let's give a bit of wiggle room. Not enough wiggle room. A bit more. Perfect. I mean, it's not a million miles away. The factory one's got a lot more bends in it, but I don't like Radiohead that much anyway. Not, not the early stuff, so. The end of the pipe has got something in it. It looks like it's been cut with, well, not, not with a tool like this anyway. Hello, can I have my tool back? Oh, paintbrush. 
multiple paintbrushes. What's happened here? Ah, there's no floor tools to help me. I'm gonna have to get up. This is not wanting to come apart. Ah. Oh, some floor tools here. Thanks. That yeah, should be all right. It's not the best. All right. We have a brake line. Let's go install it. Oh, not too bad. Look at that. Get the other one. I'm not tying it up just yet. Getting the other one out might be a pain. Um, oh, this fuel sensor wiring. It's going to be in the way. Does that unplug? No, it doesn't. That does. Let's see if we can get rid of some of that length. Need to clean out where it was rusted. Huh. Perhaps you've had more faith. But that's not too bad, that is it? It's a bit long up here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Obviously need to shorten it, but pretty good. Happy days. So it's not perfect up here, but I mean, it's, it's all right. Can you see? Not perfect, but it's all right. I'll, uh, I'll not get too carried away. I'll get on with the second one and then I'll make them all, I'll make them both kind of fit right. But I want to dab this with the brush around here where it's dripping, it's fucking dripping all over. And then I'll make the second line and I'll see you for the final, well, for the second to last job, the penultimate job, which will be these bushes. Will these bolts come undone? What do you think? Yeah, join me shortly, we'll find out. All right, the brake lines are done. Um, not perfect, but gotta say, Went a lot better than the first time I tried to do brake lines on the E46. Have a look at this. So starting here, a little bit crisscross. Uh, that looks a bit wet, I'll double check it's tight. But look at that, you know? Hey look, brake lines, yeah? The rust is vanishing, we've got brake lines. Um, this bit of tape around the copper pipe, who can tell me why that exists? Why has someone decided to put that there? Was that when they were just making the line to make make it easy to make the line or something? Or is that to stop the fitting coming off or to stop the... What's, why is that brake line there, mechanics? Although the electrical tape did give me an idea. So remember these fuckers are, are real hard to get off. I thought I'd put some tape around the thread. Maybe, I don't know if it'll stay there forever or what, but I just talked them up 165. Uh, gravity Newton meters, so that's all done. So now it's time to, well, we're not gonna put the under tray on yet. We'll, we'll leave this, we'll let that cure at least overnight. I'm gonna be gone rallying for the next two days, but I'll come back up one night in the week, hopefully, and we can, we can really fix all that. But the next task is gonna be these bushes. So we need to take this lower arm off, right? So there's a bolt there, a bolt there. These are the bushes that we wanna change. Right, and as you can see, I think this one's the worst. That one, that one looks knackered, right? So we'll undo that, undo that, and then it's the ride height. Okay, so we've got the ride height sensor. Maybe just undo the cable tie, tie up. We've got this big bolt that goes through the, goes through the lower part of the rear hub. Hello, you've got some, uh, some patterns going on. Drive shafts are looking healthy. Oh, CV gator looks about ready to split, but I'm sure it'll be fine. 
Um, yeah, this this could be a pain in the ass, so I'll get the cameras rigged up. Lower shock, bolt, bush. That doesn't look happy either. I did think about buying some rear shocks as well, but I couldn't find a deal like what I found for the front shocks. And it was going to be like another 150 or 160 quid just for cheap ones. So, and you know, proper ones were, were like 100 pounds a pair. Uh, were about 100 pounds each, sorry. So I just decided the expense wasn't worth it. It was the front end that was rattling. The front end was all over the shop. I've not noticed anything wrong with the rear ends. I've not felt the rear end loose. My tyres that came off were wearing pretty good. A lot of people complain about inside tyre wear on these cars. I didn't have any of that. The tyre wear was good. I've not felt any unsettling things about the rear. Oh, and another thing. Remember I bought that gearbox mount? That £20 gearbox mount, which could have been a new spring. Well, how am I going to get in there? And why did I not buy a prop donut if I'm going to take all this off? Because the prop donut is showing signs of... Yeah, it's showing quite a few signs of uh, I'm going to go soon. So we'll have that to do at some point. So maybe we'll just save... We'll just save the gearbox for that and maybe do a gearbox oil service as well. Fine, whoa, steady on. Right, let's do the uh, wishbone. We'll come back to it. Right, something that I, I didn't buy that I perhaps should have bought was new bolts here. Now these bolts do the wheel alignment as well. They adjust the toe, I'm pretty sure. So these are the, you know, ones with the um, offset washers which push the arm in and out. I'm hoping we can save these ones. If not, I've got some E46 ones, but I think this thread's bigger. I think these are, they look bigger anyway. I think these might be M14, maybe. Um, so I've not, I've not greased anything. Hopefully, we don't have too many corrosion things, problems. These look like it could be a problem. This bolt going through doesn't look too bad because it's all covered up, so that should be okay. Another risk for these bolts is going to be that the bush is seized to them, the inner race of the bush is seized to them. Hopefully not, but let's, uh, yeah, let's just get an impact on that and see what happens, I reckon. Maybe give it a little clean. We'll give it a little clean, but I'm going to go drastic. What size socket do we reckon they are? That's a 21. It is a 21, okay. I mean, pretty corroded. <laughs> Sadly, than anything, that brush, but we'll see. Might. It might help. That side. Oh, that's smaller. Okay, how lucky do you feel? <laughs> oh, that was fucking annoying. Right, turn back. I think these cheap sockets might uh, might give way before the bolt does. Yeah, these uh, these sockets are becoming twelve pointed. They're not made for that. All right, let's, uh, let's try the manual method. Well, that might actually be a 20, not a 21, which might explain why the socket was having a bad time. No. Is it a 21 or a 20? Hmm. Might be a 20. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. BMW really likes to use all your toolbox compared to all the other manufacturers. Oh, fuck. 
I wonder how much them bolts are. Maybe we just buy new ones and cut these ones out. Fuck! That was fucking loud. I think that's just the... The bolt was moving then, not the... It moved here, it jumped here, I think. Right, I think we might be going into a... A part three. This might be the end of part two. Because it seems... I need to order some parts. Ah, fucking, that's... Let's try the inner one. Oh, that one seems all right. It's turning anyway. That one's turning as well. Shock bolt, sun done. In the bush, in the bottom of the shocks, is bad. The, the bush in that shock was bad. That one's fine as well. This side's a bit tighter. But it's moving. All right, well, that's the second worst problem. This is the worst problem. Not having good enough sockets either is a little bit of an issue. Fuck me, that's bad, yeah. All right. Let's try this non-impact socket. I'm just gonna hold the button down for, what, 10 seconds or something? See if that helps. Didn't, didn't help. Thought it might. Some heat in that now. Oh, this is a. This is annoying. Defenders on if I want to keep doing that. Fuck. Fucking why is everything so loud? Is that because of the minimum? I'm a little bit worried about this snapping because they snap, don't they? The heads from these things. This bit of bar is not going to snap.
No, you should tidy your toolbox. That might be it. That might be it. You are having an alignment. Okay. We'll come back to that. Maybe it's just the weight of the uh, arm. Right, can we go two for two? Uh, how are we going to get onto this? I have to move you. Oh, ah, wrong way, Batman. I'm strong from the exhaust, dude. Oh, that one snapped. Oh, that one snapped. Didn't dent the exhaust though. So we've got one to order. <laughs> Quarter to seven, Sunday night. I've got some work to do tomorrow. And I've got to drive down to Silverstone. So I'm gonna call this video here once I get this bolt out. This bloody bolt, once I get this bolt out. I to measure the ends of the bits that I've got. I've looked tidy up before I leave. I can't. Why is that lifting the car? I can trust you in a little bit of Suspension compression. It's fucking well in there. Who wants to come off? Do you want to come off? Look at the volunteers. Great, now they're both fucked. Damper doesn't seem healthy. Are you happy now? Oh, come on, stop being silly now. Oh, probably mushroomed the fuck out of it, trying to. Okay, the good news is I got that bolt out. I got a bit of head cam here, but I got the bolt out. The bad news, 
Don't worry about the bad news. The bad news is it's knackered. Oh. The threads are fucked, so no wonder it's so hard to get off. Looks like it's been over tightened pretty savagely. Don't know why the phone camera loves to do a steam up, but yeah, look at that. So that's knackered. She's dead. So yeah, they're about 15 pound each, these ones, I think. Uh, well, I think, we, I think we should call it there. I think we should stick a plug in it for now, right? Let it soak. I'll let it soak for a bit. Um, hopefully, uh, I can get some parts across and, and maybe next weekend I'll do a, I'll do a, a follow-up video to this video. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get everything sorted. So what's left to do off, off of my list is a wing mirror glass. Nice and easy job. A wheel alignment. And I'm gonna have a poke around the rear end now, seeing as though I need to order some more bits again. Is there anything else I should consider ordering? I'll go and have a look. But that has been the, uh, the love, the care, the attention of keeping an old car on the road. It's due for tax soon as well. Have I mentioned how much it is to tax yet? I think I might have already mentioned how much it is to tax. But still, I'm pretty confident, still more economical, economically friendly to run. We'll not count my two days up here pissing about and having this space and having a ramp and having tools. We'll not count any of that of course. Alright, I'll see you for part two. We'll get this old girl sorted. Back on the road, fighting fit. <laughs>